Hey Stampers, it's Linda Schmidt with Stampin' with the Hounds. I have another fun fold card to show you today. This one has um, several different names and actually there's um, a few ways of doing it. I'm going to be showing you more of the smaller um, column or pillar I guess and then I'll do another tutorial I've got it all prepped so this will be two parts so one part this is part one and then part two I'll have the other one which has the wider pillar so you can kind of see the difference between them and then again there's different ways you can do this as the landscape um, and you can also do it as a portrait style so um, I'll be doing a video on that one and then today we are going to work on what I would call just this the smaller it's kind of like a one inch um, pillar so what's great about these is they just fold down flat and they mail into a normal a2 envelope um, the only thing is you do want to make sure if you do a lot of um, embellishments if you get really thick um, that would be the only thing um, that you may need to add some extra postage but um, I usually kind of check it. I've got a little envelope thing, and if it fits through there, then, <laughs> then I know, know I'm good. So um, we're going to be doing a version of this one today. And like I said, I'm going to be doing part two that'll show um, these wider ones. Um, so stay tuned for that. So for this one, um, again, I've got some other samples. So we're going to, I'm going to be featuring the textured floral um, stamp set from Stampin' Up. So this is a nice, pretty floral set. And then it has coordinating dies. And this is in the annual catalog. I know a lot of times people get so focused on the mini catalog and they forget about the stuff that's in the main catalog. Um, and then here's another one. And I'm using that Winter Meadow uh, designer series paper which is in the holiday mini and what's nice is this paper is actually going to carry over um, so I'll be able to use it um, a little bit longer than just after the holidays so that's kind of fun um, so this again has that uh, moody mauve which is an in color pretty peacock and then it also has um, you can uh, shaded spruce kind of coordinates with that too and then on this one I did more of the blueberry bushel and again that winter meadow paper and again this folds down flat which is nice um, and then I did um, just some scraps on the background and then because you know I love my owls <laughs> uh, this paper so this is um, you get two sheets of each one of these so this is more of like a white um, with some silver kind of speckles and then you'll get a, uh, two sheets and these are all 12 by 12 this is the lost lagoon and it has um, some like metallic snowflakes and then the back one again they say lost lagoon but this does kind of coordinate with uh, coastal cabana um, and pretty peacock too so I am using lost lagoon as my card base and then again this one I've got my winter owl and then I did some uh, gems and then I also added that glow in the dark paper uh, for the moon so again another really fun one that just folds down flat for that so that's one of my favorite ones <laughs> I love my owls and they are retiring so if you haven't uh, purchase this little uh, winter owl set um, you've got until the end of December and then they will it will retire so it's not carrying over so we're gonna get started we're gonna do a version of this one today so the supplies that you are going to need I got lots of pieces here Start. Let's see those go with that. That. And this is up. Okay. So your main piece of your card is going to be your cardstock base, and I'm using Misty Moonlight, and this is five and a half by eight and a quarter. Um, and then on the longer side, we're going to score at one, two, three, and four. So we're going to do that first. So get that done. So again, on the long side, we'll score at one inch, two inch, three inch, and four inch. So that is the cardstock base. I'm going to set that aside. The next thing we need that we're going to be scoring is we're making that box. And that piece is this one. 
So this is what I call the front focal piece. So this is going to be this little box here that um, we're doing. So on this one, it's um, cardstock. And this can be either the same color as your base or you can change it up. So I kind of changed it up and I'm using Mossy Meadow. So on this one, it is four and a half by four inches on that one. And you want to score on the longer side. So at the four and a half side, we're going to score, we're going to score at a half an inch and one and a half. Make sure I'm, I'm standing. So it's like my, my vision. I can't always really see. Okay. All right. So that's the, all the scoring um, that we need to do. So now I'm going to show you what you need to cut for all of your designer series papers. So um, since we're working off of here, so this is at four and a quarter or four and a half by four, you will need a piece of designer series paper, which is what I'm calling the front focal, which is going to be this piece here. So this can be cardstock that you emboss. Um, I'm using designer series paper, so it's the winter meadow, and I'm using the same sheet. I'm going to be showcasing uh, the front and the back. So this piece is two and three quarters by three and three quarters. Now, again, if you wanted to, you could add another layer on top of this one, and you would just go down either a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch, depending on what your border is that you want to see. But I'm just doing the one layer because I'm having all this stuff on here. Um, so again, so that was two and three quarters by three and three quarters. And that's going to go on to this piece. Then when we fold it up, I like to continue the pattern paper on the side. So this little piece is the side piece on that front focal. So it's three quarters of an inch by three and three quarters. So that's all of the front, the front uh, part of the card. Then when we go to decorate this piece, you're gonna need um, just a quarter sheet of cardstock and this is just for the back of the card. So I just did basic white and I did the thick paper. This is a uh, four by five and a quarter. Then you will need, so on our card base, this is going to be where I'm layering Mossy Meadow and then I've got my designer series paper. So that's going to be what this, this panel, this is what I call the back panel. So I've got the card stock and then I've got the designer series paper. So the card stock is going to be three by five and a quarter. And then the designer series paper. Now, depending on if you want a really narrow border, you'll go down an eighth of an inch. If you want a wider um, border, then go down a quarter of an inch. So I did this the narrower. So mine is going to be the two and seven eighths by five and an eighth on mine. But totally optional. So I kind of gave you both of them there. So that's the back layer. So that'll be layered onto here. And then we're going to have, I like to decorate what I call the pillar. So I got three pieces of that designer series paper. And I used the same paper as what I was using for my back. Totally optional if you want to switch it up like I did on my owl card. I, you know, I did the white on the pillar. I did the Lost Lagoon Snowflake on the top focal. And then I did the foil one on the back. So you can do, you do you, however you want to do it. But on these, you're going to need three of them, and they're three quarters of an inch wide by five and a quarter, and you, you need three of them. And those are going to get attached onto these score lines um, that we did, just to decorate it. All right, so I think that's all the pieces. And then whatever you want to use um, for decorating, um, we'll do that. So let's go ahead and start to put this together. So I've already scored, you know, I, we did these scores. So this is one, two, three, and four. I am just going to start folding on these score lines. These are all going to be mountain folds. Okay. So then what that does is it turns into that. So we're going to put adhesive. So if you're looking at it with your score lines on the right side, you're going to put adhesive on this very first one. And I do like to use 
um, the tearing tape just because it's a stronger tape. You can use liquid glue too. Okay. And then I like to put my panels of designer series paper on now before I make my box. So I'm going to take those three quarters of an inch by five and a quarter, and there was three of them. And we're going to glue these down. I'm looking for the right glue that I want. Okay. So now I cut these, so I was kind of continuing my pattern when I cut it. If that works out for you, that's always a, a good thing to know. So we're going to start. I'm just going to color in, or color in, <laughs> glue the one strip. This is going to go right on that, what I call the second column, because our first column or our first section had the tear and tape. And then we'll do the next one. So now I do like to use the uh, the liquid glue here, just because I can um, have a little bit of wiggle room as I'm laying the pieces down in case I happen to put it down crooked. It allows me to kind of wiggle it around in place before it's ready. And then the last one. Okay, so now that will all just fold in like so. So then we're gonna take these adhesive pieces off. So I'm just going to use my, my pick tool or part of my pick tool <laughs> to help peel that off. Now what I do is you're going to, I'm trying to think of the best way of explaining this. So you're going to take, so you've got, you see the first uh, piece of designer series paper and the tape and then bring this over and then that way it's forming your your pillar on that so you see all three of your designer series panels and then you can always just kind of go back with your bone folder just to make sure it gives it that nice so it stands which is kind of nice all right so now these were our uh, back layer panels which the cardstock was three by five and a quarter. That's gonna layer here. And then our designer series paper, because I did a narrower um, cut, that's the two, two and seven eighths by five and an eighth. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, adhere this to my mossy metal cardstock. And again, this is where I like the liquid glue because I can kind of play around with it before I glue that down. All right, and then this is gonna get attached to the back of your card on the Misty Moonlight. Now I'm just going to have that kind of quarter inch border so you can see that blue behind. All right, so that's coming together. So there's the basically the base of the card um, and the, what I call the back of the card. Okay. All right, so now let's make our the top the top box. So we're going to take this one. So this was the front focal piece. Um, that was the four and a half by four and on the four and a half inch side we scored at a half an inch and we scored at one and a half so same thing on these so here's my score line where it dips in I'm gonna fold towards that and then I'm gonna fold again so now this is becoming my top, the top box, basically. 
on this half inch tab, you will put your tear and tape again. Okay, so that's gonna go like that. Then you will also put tear and tape on the very edge because this is what's gonna attach to the pillar on the base of the card. Okay, so now you've got the tape here and on the other side. So this is then going to, if you look at it, that tape will go here and that'll go there attached to it. Okay, so let's decorate this piece. So on my focal one, I'm now using the back side of the paper and I'm gonna attach it. So make sure you always keep this on the right hand side when you go to decorate. And this piece again, this was the three and three quarters. Um, oh, sorry. This was the two and three quarters by three and three quarters um, was this paper here. Then this piece, which is I'm calling the side panel uh, for the front focal is three and three quarters inch length and then three quarters of an inch in width. And that is just going to go right here. And if you wanted to, again, you could layer, you could make this... Um, be cardstock instead. It doesn't have to be designer series paper. That's what's kind of nice about some of these. You can really just play around with what you want and how many layers. All right. So now I do like to decorate everything now before I put this part, the box, basically the box onto the back of the card. So we're going to decorate and, oh, sorry. We're going to move my camera around a little bit. <clears throat> so I'm going to be using my pieces. So I did already stamp and die cut a bunch of things just to save on time. But I did want to show you a little tip on this flower and stamping it. Because um, it was a little tricky when I first started. So I will actually, on the back... I'm going to decorate the back of my card really quick just so I can show you. So this is just that white card stock. This is a quarter sheet. It's just going to layer onto the back of that. So four by five and a quarter. And I'm just using the basic white. And I'm just going to show you. So this is from the textured floral. So I'm using this uh, image and then the little, they could be seeds, <laughs> but they could like kind of like the little flower stems on the, that flower. So I found that when I, let's see here, do I want to do, I think I did, I'm going to do the blueberry bushel, I think. So I'm going to do blueberry bushel and get some of this stuff out of the way and mossy metal for my inks. So I have a little bit of room here. Oh, yep, and there's Ezra saying hi. <laughs> yes, Ezra. <laughs> she, um, it's getting close to her dinner. You know, the time change, oh my gosh. She does not like the hour difference. So she thinks it's dinner time right now, <laughs> and it's not. So she may get a little vocal. I'm going to go ahead and stamp the little, what I call the stems or the seeds first. And I'm just going to put them kind of like right here. I know Ezra. Yeah, so that's why you're stamping with the hound. So I, you know, she's my little greyhound. Um, as some of you know, I used to have, um, we used to have four and uh, three of them passed away this last year and a half. So um, little Ezra, she's our oldest one. She's 11. And we've had her since she was four. Um, and she's quite, she's still pretty feisty <laughs> for an 11 year old. Very uh, opinionated, and vocal as you can see <laughs> all right so now what you're doing and this is gonna be hard to see but i'm trying to uh, let me show it might be easier if i show on this because it's pink so i'm taking these three stems here and i'm kind of making sure that that flower those are lined up 
this one up here I'm kind of lining up and then this one over here so I've kind of got like my little triangle to use as a guide when I'm doing this and then trying to not get my head in the camera here at the same time so I'm you looking at trying to get these over here and that goes there Oh, wait, hold on here. Yep, that's right. I need this one here, that one there. Or you just stamp it and say, eh, good, it's good. But this is kind of what I've been doing. And this blueberry bushel is kind of dark, so it's hard to see. But, but see, then now you've kind of got those little stems lined up with your flowers. So when you're doing that, sometimes, you know, it's easier to do the solid first and then the, then the stem. Um, but on this one, I found that it was easier if I did the stem first and then the flower, especially if I had a, a darker ink. Um, it was kind of kind of tricky. So, so that's how you do that part. And then let me real quick clean these because I'm going to put my saying on. So we'll close these up so I don't ruin my card. Okay. And then I think for my saying, I'm going to actually do that in the Moody Mauve. And this is from a retired set, but I did like how it had this little flower kind of today blooms just for you um, saying in here. Yeah, I tend to keep a lot of my retired um, sayings or um, a lot of my sets too, depending on like what what I'm using it for, for like for personal use, but um, I do sell, you know, I do get rid of some things, but uh, after a while, I feel, always figure if I haven't used it in a few years, then it's like, well, it's time to, time to sell it. All right, so this was going to be the front. So I'm gonna flip this over, and then this is gonna go on the back of my card. All right, do, do, do. All right. so now let's decorate our front. So I already, like I said, I already die cut a bunch of stuff. So this is kind of that little sparkly um, dazzling paper. It was in the, oh, I think this is in the main catalog too. I just had some scraps left over. And then this is the, that shimmery kind of in color. This is that moody mauve. So I just die cut um, some of these from it. And then I already stamped my flower and I die cut it out. Um, same thing. And I wasn't quite sure on some of these other ones. I just cut them because I wasn't, I didn't know what I wanted. <laughs> so I've got some other flower options here. And these are all done in the Moody Mauve and the Blueberry Bushel. And then this one was the Misty Moonlight and then Blueberry Bushel in the center. So just so I have some options. But I think what I wanted to do, so I was going to look and see here. If I didn't know if I wanted to do the pink or if I want to do the sparkly or I might do both so I was thinking if I did something like that and then I've got my saying and then got a flower and I could do a little sparkle and I do have some ribbon and again this is some retired ribbon that um, I have like a pink or I've got this lighter blue let's just see thinking I might do the blue all right I think I got it a plan It's a little too busy. So I think if I did that with the blue, I still liked having this pink in here. I 
I know I wish I could do the live streaming, but ugh, our Wi-Fi <laughs> down here in my dungeon basement, uh, it just doesn't cut it. I've tried and it's it's pretty painful. <laughs> so you have to put a comment in saying, no, you should have done the pink or no, you should have done the glitter. Uh, yeah, I always like to hear comments and stuff and I do reply um, to them. I don't know, maybe I do like the sparkle. Okay, I think we're gonna do the sparkle. We'll do the little shimmer on the bottom and then this one. I think that's my game plan. Okay, so this is a pretty fine um, image. So I'm gonna use some fine tip glue. Um, this is, I, I don't know, I was I was on a quest to find <laughs> adhesive that I really liked. And this one, I actually, I really do. I know it's not from Stampin' Up, but I love this stuff. It's got this little fine, um, tip glue and then I've got the little stopper so it doesn't clog on me which is kind of nice and then it does come with like um, you know a little toolkit so there's basically another nozzle which can be for the wider and then there's a little pin in there to help if it does clog um, it pops it out so and then you can get it it's refillable too which is nice so then I'm not always wasting and you know on stuff so and again you can find this at your local online Amazon <laughs> or any kind of craft online craft thing too so I'm always like if you find something that works for you then so be it that's because you want a good adhesive all right so we're going to just kind of angle this and this sparkle paper uh, paper uh, you can color it too with your um, Stampin' Blends or some markers, which is kind of fun too. All right, and then this is going to come in there. since that's kind of being on being adhered onto that glitter paper sometimes you just need to kind of hold it for a little bit or use your block to kind of hold that in place so while that's kind of drying I think what I'm going to do is I'll do my ribbon so what I was doing is um, I just weaved this ribbon behind and then it's attached um, just with some normal, I just kind of hold it with some scotch tape and then I use a dimensional then to, so what I'm going to do is I'm taking, I'm leaving the ribbon on the spool and I'm starting, you know, because you want to have it be a little bit longer so that, you know, you can still see it behind your image. I know Ezra, almost, we're almost ready. So I do one loop and then I bring it back. I know. Life is hard. And then that way it'll just kind of be attached to there. So like I said, I just like to use just some normal tape, like this scotch tape, masking tape or whatever, just to hold this in place so my ribbon isn't moving around. And then I'll put dimensionals on the back of this then. Yep, that's good. Okay. All right, and then we'll just go ahead and angle some of this ends. take and yeah, I think I do want the smaller one. I'm just going to take this little one here. We're almost done as a ra. I'm going to take this little shimmer, the Moody Mauve. And we'll tuck this 
because of my ribbon. Let's see here. The pressure's on to finish this card so she can get her dinner. <laughs> Really, we do feed her. She's not starving. <laughs> She's just acting like it. Okay, and then this one. So again, this is going to be going on my card. So I always kind of like just to do a spot check and see. Okay, yeah, that'll be fine if I overhang that a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and put another dimensional. And I'm doing the dimensional more on the bottom here of the flower because I'm going to attach it so that it's kind of sitting on the circle. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the top part here. Okay. So now this can go ahead and be attached. So what we're going to do is you're going to take off the tear and tape on this um, half inch panel here. And then what you're going to do, so I'm trying to explain this. So you want, so I'm just going to tuck this behind. What I'm doing is I'm lining up the edge of this to the edge of that mossy meadow. And then I'm also looking at keeping this, you know, somewhat centered so that I've got the same distance between um, my top and bottom. And so this green is butted up right against the edge of that green that's on my back layer. So once I have that down, now that half inch flap is attached and all good. And I just press down to make sure. And then for attaching this part, I take my pillar, let's see here. Or did I mess that up? Oh, I did mess that up. Oh, shoot. Sorry. Rewind. Let's see if I can peel this off very carefully. Oh, shoot. No, I know what I did wrong. Yeah, I did this the other day, too. And I was like, ah, remember, don't do it that way. But now I might not be able to get this up. No. Oh, shoot. Okay. So what... Instead of having it being folded at that one, at the half inch, I needed to keep it folded at this part and line this one up to the edge. That's what I did. But God, this is gonna it's attached now and I can't get that off. Maybe. Ooh, paper's gonna tear a little bit. Oh, this'll just be a sample. <laughs> All right, always something. But hey, even the demonstrator um, makes mistakes. So life, it's real. Life is real. <laughs> All right, so take two. Let's see if I can get this off. I'll just probably end up recutting a piece of paper. Okay, so. Yeah, I'll just take this off. Okay. So instead... You need to keep this, right, because then it goes there. If I line it up there, hold on here while I, okay, so if it's attached there on that half inch, then that gets attached onto there. Yep, so what you need to do is you'll have your tape here which I'm gonna have to probably cut a new piece. Now we will just, I'll wing it. I'll figure out something to do there. I'll make it work. It'll just be my little sample <laughs> that I have in my box for 
how to do the fold. So I'm just going to put some glue on here just so I've got a little wiggle room. Okay, now keeping it folded here, I'm going to line that part up with the edge of the green that I have as my back layer. Oh, of course that's now not gonna, with my glue I might not have had enough on there. Let's see here. My, yeah, I just gotta hold it here. So sorry, oh my goodness. Things were going so well, why is that not gluing? What is going on? Boy, I'm just struggling today. There and there. Making sure it's straight. There we go. Okay. So like I said, so if you keep you would have that tear and tape on the back of this part. This is folded over. You line this up with the edge of that card. The Saint, so green to green. And then this way, this piece then. It's lined up. Okay. And then since I'm struggling today, I'm just going to keep it going like this, keeping that up because then when it folds flat to mail, yep. So you push down your pillar to the left. And then that'll be aligned so now it holds flat. Oh my goodness, what a struggle. <laughs> All right, so I will kind of fix my little boo-boo there um, off screen. I'll figure out what to do. But like, like I said, otherwise it's going to be just in my, in my sample box. But let's add some gems. These are the tinsel gems. Um, so it kind of has that lemon lolly, the uh, moody mauve. This is kind of like a blueberry bushel. It kind of coordinates with quite a few things. And then like a shaded spruce um, with it. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do some of the pink just to carry, add a little bit of that pink color to it. So we're gonna add, I think, let's see here. Maybe we'll do one here. And then we'll do a couple up here. And I like the gems that have like a small and large um, pieces to it because I always kind of like doing that triangle. Whoops, I'm losing gems here. Okay. All right. Well, besides the little mishap, <laughs> uh, really, these are, they're quite fun to make um, and everything. So I will uh, clean up my mess here and we will do part two where I'll show you how to do the other um, option of the double box where it's the wider um, part of it. So thanks again for watching. Thanks for putting up with me and Ezra and her chirping. <laughs> and I look forward to stamping with you again soon. Thanks again for the support. I appreciate each and every one of you. Um, have a great day and I will stamp with you again soon. Bye.